Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Catherine and today I feel like an FBI spy with this high neck dark shirt and this very bright eyeshadow. But I was bored. It's a Friday when I'm filming this so let me live with my pink and my orangey pinkness and then I decided to change up the shirt from black to this Catwoman suit basically. So anyway, we're gonna ignore this. I ordered some new clothes, so hopefully they come soon. But I was tired of what my usual get up. And I know you don't care about this, so let me dive into what you actually came here for, right? And that is out school copyright and trademark and all the craziness that goes into it. So so I've had a lot of questions about out school and copyright and trademarks and whatever, so I decided to make a video about it. And I'm gonna start with telling you what I think about all of this. And what I think is if something is too difficult to look into, if it causes me too much stress to make a class or inhibits me from moving forward, I drop it. I try to look into copyright and trademark actually just for you guys and you guys. Usually I say y'all. But I looked into it just for you special people. And I stand by what I said. It is too ridiculous, it is too much, so I keep it super, super simple. I don't use any copyrighted images on my course image or in my classes. In all my classes, I have a Word document, or I use Google Slides, but every slide is just a bunch of words that I typed, and then I jazz it up by adding a fun background to it. So I add a really pretty background to it just to give that spice. Ooh at the table. For what I lack in pictures and images, I make up with my vibrant, colorful personality. I have a whole video on how I make my course images, and you can watch that. I have a free version, which means I use the free version of Canva, and I also have a paid version, because I do use Photoshop for my YouTube videos and for my out-school images, and that's $10 a month. So it's not a bad, bad investment for me, but if you don't feel like doing it, I don't blame you. I have a free version on how to make your course images that you can watch as well. So click that little card that just came up or go search on my channel. So I will probably forget to put it in my description. <laughs> anyway, and then in my classroom, I don't use any copyrighted images. Like I said, it's all words on a Google slide document because why stress myself out? I don't feel like it. <laughs> For my first class, my first class that I created was my Harry Potter class and they on OutSchool, they have different websites that they offer. They say Upsplash or Unsplash, I never remember. And a couple others give you free copyrighted, you know, they're not copyrighted images that you can use for your thumbnails. And I tried three or four times to send in one of those images as my um, thumbnail for my video. Every time OutSchool said, mm, copyrighted, no, no, <laughs> we don't do that. So ever since then, I'm like, you know what, screw you. I'm just going to make my own and haven't had a problem since. So 12 out of 10, a thousand out of 10, recommend just making your own thumbnail. Again, I have a couple videos about it and just use just plain old words or maybe some Canva clip art in your presentations in your classes. So that's what I suggest, but I did look into this for you. So let me tell you what Out School says about copyright. So like I said, I just avoid it at all costs and I now live a beautiful happy simple life and I really recommend that's what you do but if you want to use a certain image or picture I'm gonna tell you what OutSchool said and I'm looking at the article titled copyright and trademark guidance now I get all my information from OutSchool they are super super clear black and white about pretty much everything and they have an article about pretty much everything so if you ever have a question about copyright I beg of you just like my video about what not to teach on out school those high risk sensitive topics I beg of you for the copyright and the trademark things that you have questions about please please do not ask me okay I don't know like I said I just avoid it at all costs I use canva clip art or no art at all and for the image, I typically just use my beautiful face. <laughs> Either check out the articles on OutSchool, they have tons of them on copyright and trademark, or email them personally on support at outschool.com and they will be sure to get back to you in a jiffy. 
But what I've read so far is that while we cannot advise you on specific legal issues, we put together tips and best practices on how to avoid copyright and trademark infringement. <laughs> That's how they showed off this article. And then at the bottom, uh, they have all these other articles. It says resources, and it says if you'd like to learn more about copyright and trademarks below are a few resources that might be helpful. We cannot vouch for the accuracy or completeness of the information provided on these websites. Um, so what that tells me is OutSchool is telling you what's up, but they aren't responsible for it. Therefore, you do your own research or don't do it at all because they don't care. It's not really their problem. They will just X your class and say, hey, work on that. That's copyright. Or they're just going to let you handle all the legalities that go with these copyrighted images, which if you didn't know, now you know, that if you do get flagged for copyright and say the company, Disney, I don't know, come after you and they're like, hey, that's ours, we're pissed, any court things or legal things that come after that, it's up to you because you're a contract teacher, you're like a freelance teacher, you're not under the out school company, therefore you're on your own. So that's why out school's like, I don't know. <laughs> figure it out. And like I said, you don't have to. Just avoid it. Just avoid it. But they give you all these things just so you can look at. And yeah, because all this tells me is OutSchool is going to do their best to tell you about it, but at the end of the day, it's not their problem. And they really don't know either. Because <laughs> it's a lot that goes into it. And also, like, I really highly doubt Disney would come for someone who has a class on princesses. I think the worst thing that's going to happen is them being like, hey, don't do that anymore. And you're like, oh, sorry. But I mean, if Disney did come after you for that, well then we just aren't Disney fans anymore, are we? I'm looking at another part of this article and it, under best practices, it says, while we cannot provide legal advice on individual questions or cases of copyright or trademark infringement, we hope the above explain <laughs> The above explanations and guidelines were helpful. Here's a summary of best practices to avoid copyright or trademark infringement. So basically what they're saying <laughs> after that, what they're trying to say is you can use stuff that is under public domain, which means if the creator has been dead for 70 years, then that content suddenly becomes public domain and then you can use it. You can buy a purchasing license from Shutterstock or Getty Images. Uh, you can also check out Creative Commons. Oh, then it has a whole thing about possible consequences of copyright and trademark infringement. It says OutSchool takes this stuff very seriously and they prohibit you from using our platform in ways that infringes on anyone else's copyright or trademark protections. So if you violate anyone else's copyright or trademark protections in your class listing or teaching materials, you can be personally liable and have to pay monetary damages and the other side's attorney fees without a lawsuit. And they say we reserve the right to take down any material put on the platform, blah, 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 blah. You can read these, di these guidelines and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this right here because now I'm just reading the articles. So I'm sorry if this is not the information you were looking for, but my best advice to you is like I said, do what I do, make your own images, make your own wordy slides, do it on your own and then you know, you're not infringing on anyone's copyright you're not violating anything and when i was reading this i even got nervous i was like oh my god am i gonna get in trouble for you know having a title harry potter and no i'm not there's a bunch of other harry potter classes there's a bunch of other office classes there's i'm not alone in this and out school approved my images and they're not copyrighted so i know i'm fine but you have to remember in america <laughs> the united states everything is stated very, I don't want to say cynically, very seriously, very so just to really put a stop to any copyright misuse or anything like that because um, you know, you know there are people out there when you give them an inch they take a mile so this is for those types of people right right again this article is called copyright and trademark guidance and there's a bunch of little helpful tips and tricks in here I suppose um, I tried to pull out the tips and tricks for you. There's really not much. <gasps> there's really not much to me. Um, there's other videos on YouTube about copyright and trademark, and I know a lot of other people went to much more depth about this. They actually did some serious research and they found some good stuff that works for them, or you know, good sites that works for them and stuff. So find one of those videos if you're like, no, I have to have 
this video in my class or I have to have this picture in my class and I understand I'm sure there's some things that you know would really help if you can show them um, and on here it says like as long as you cite it you know some things you can just cite and it's okay but anyway like I said it just it's just easier to avoid altogether than go through all this trouble anyway what I was saying was there's other videos about copyright and trademark stuff there's this article that you can look at called copyright and trademark guidance they have other articles you can also email them but from the sounds of it they don't know really either they're just trying to protect themselves and they're trying to protect you as much as possible so like I said for 84 times <laughs> make your own save yourself the trouble and the headache and keep it simple keep it simple if you have to go do research on what what you can put in your image then just Cut out the research, just do something you know you can do. That's my thinking. I don't know how you feel, but that's how I feel about it. So anyway, check out other videos about copyright if you are interested. Email out school, any questions, or your attorney or lawyer. They might be more helpful, I don't know. But don't email me about it. Thank you. Because <laughs> I don't know. I'm just a freelance teacher like you, trying to help you, but eh? <laughs> I sound like uh, Tim Allen from Home Improvement. <laughs> that sound he does. I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, just keep it simple. Do things that you know are okay, like free version of Canva and making your own images, making your own, you know, typed out Google Slides, and just save yourself the time and hassle of looking up all this stuff. Yeah? Yeah. So, anyway. Please don't forget to give this video a big like and subscribe to my channel. I make tons of videos about out school, ones that are way more helpful this w than this one, honestly. I feel like I did not answer the question that you came here for, but I tried, but I got too bored and I did this instead. <laughs> so yes, but please subscribe anyway. And if you'd like to apply to out school or if you'd like to use my referral link or add me as a referrer, you are the sweetest person in the world. All that information on how to do that is in the description. And I hope to see you in my next video. Because I will see you in my next video. That's aggressive. Okay, we're done. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in my next video. Bye.